Okay, and the winners are... Mr. Wolf, Mr. Bandages, The Count, and Miss Archer! The next morning found me sitting in my bed and waiting for the servant who was going to take me to the airport. Erin hadn't managed to get away from the crow at all last night, and by midnight I was ready to call it a night. I still couldn't believe the count was Eric. I wonder if I should see him before I leave. Then again, he's bound to be busy with all the guests getting ready to leave. It's getting kind of late. Why hasn't the guy who's taking me to the airport arrived yet? At this rate, I'll miss my flight. I was about to head into the hallway to find someone to take me when I heard rapid knock at my door. It's about time. I opened the door, but instead of a servant, Eric himself was standing there. Oh good, you're still here. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but seeing off the other guests took longer than anticipated. Where would I have gone? I was waiting for the guy to take me to the airborne and he never showed. Ah yes, that's my fault. I didn't want you to leave before we could talk. And now I'm going to miss my flight. No, we can make it. Joshua is nothing if not scared getting from one place to another very quickly. As he said that here, his head butler, Joshua, slipped into the room to get my bag. Master Eric, perhaps we should continue this in the car. Right, we should get moving. He hesitantly placed his hand on my lower back to let me our room into the waiting car. We sat silently as Joshua pulled out and started driving away from the mansion. I looked at Eric and waited for him to say something, anything. But when he didn't, I asked the question that had been in my mind all night. Why didn't you tell me you were Eric? The same reason you didn't tell me about your background. I was worried it would make you see me differently. Would you ever have told me? Of course I would have, I just... I wanted to know that you cared for the real me and not the Eric everyone else sees. You do realize I thought Eric was pretty creepy at some stages, right? Yes, I'm aware of that. You didn't exactly hide it. You also called me hot, if I remember correctly. You know you're hot. You have thousands of fans that tell you that. True, but there is something about hearing it from someone I care about that makes it so much better. So, you really do care? It wasn't just some prank. Why would you think that? I'm not that cruel. I would never lie about something like this. I care about you and I want to be with you, if you still have me. And just for the record, I don't date my guests during the games. Oh well. I didn't until you came along. No, you just fleered shamelessly. No, you just fleered shamelessly. I'm nothing but a gentleman. I heard a snore from the driver's seat. Hey, you're supposed to be on my side! I'm always at your side, but you can hardly expect me to stay quiet such a blatant lie. I watched as I read out an exaggerated sigh. See? Even my butler is against me! If I was against you, you would know it. I'm merely ensuring that you don't screw this up. I don't think the staff can handle much more of you moping around. Moping? I, I do not mope. Of course, Master Valdemar. You were just wandering the house listlessly while the staff trip over themselves trying to cheer you up. Is that what they were doing? Of course. Why else do you think you were able to put together a festival overnight without any complaint? When you were suddenly happy again, they did everything in their power to keep you that way. Having you cut us a mask custom made for each guest overnight isn't something to sneeze at and that's not even getting into the logical nightmare of having all the booths stock and set up in the span of a few hours. The festival was impromptu? Yes, our master was in need of a reason to hide his entire face for the day. You think a famous author would be able to keep his expression in check? I don't get it. I looked to Eric for an explanation, he just let our love cough and looked away. We're getting close to the airport, so if you have any urgent questions, you should probably get them off your chest now. Did having you in our team give us an unfair advantage? No, for the most part I had very little to do with the actual execution of the games. I gave out the general ideas, but the staff were the ones to put it together with Joshua overseeing everything. If anything, you might have put us at a disadvantage for certain games. You're the one that wandered out in the festival games. Okay then, did you intentionally put us all in the same team? I noticed that you and Mr. Bandage seem pretty close despite the bantering. I did well, with the exception of Mr. Wolf. 
but that worked out for the best. Any other demon looks like he would have spent the entire event trying to avoid paying her off. Mr. Bandages and I go way back. I want to spend my last game on his team at least. Dad, and you wanted to see him flip out over her skill ship. That too. So that was the reason I was on your team. Should I say that I wanted to spend time with the cute enigma that won my contest? You are the one chosen out of more than a million entrants. I want to see what you were like in person. Why even host a contest? I could have been a master thief or murderer or something. And that's why Joshua did a full background check on the winner. Wait, what? How much do you know? Me? Nothing besides what I discovered during the game. I trust Joshua's judgment and he gave you the go ahead. I didn't even know you were so cute until I got the skill show when the game started. Right, there's just one more thing that's bugging me. Hmm? Your body double. Was it ever him that I spoke to when I thought it was you? With the exception of yesterday, the dog of you were never within speaking distance. All he would need to do is utter a single word and the secret would have been out. What? Why? Our vocal registers are on the same frequency. Anytime he had to make an announcement or appearance, I would have to pre-record the message. That's not something I could successfully do with conversation, so he never actually spoke to guests. So it was always you. It was always me. I let out a sigh of relief. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried for a moment I might have fallen for the body double and that being here with you was a mistake. Hey, I'm not going to let any fake take my place. Good. Don't think you'll ever be able to get out of doing something with me by sending him. I would never dream of it. There's no way I would send another guy to get close with my girl. Mr. Valdemar, Missy, we have arrived. Joshua put the car to a stop. Already? There's so much more I... She has a fly to catch and you'll see her soon enough. Eric and Joshua share a silent look before Joshua let out an exasperated sigh. We still have to check in her bags, Mr. Valdemar can talk on the way. Joshua put my bags along behind him, ignoring all the glares Eric's and his way. Eric's sign turned on me as we quickly followed. So, are you still... do you still want to be with me? I stopped suddenly at his question. I watched as his eyebrows furrowed with worry. You really are having second thoughts, aren't you? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you sooner, but I, I knew it would change everything and... I grabbed both sides of his face and pulled him down. I watched his eyes widen so her lips met before pulling back. That's that answer. He pulled me back to him before I could even finish speaking. I will lean in with a more insistent kiss. Perhaps you should save this for a more private setting. I quickly pulled away from Eric and found myself flush with embarrassment. I had completely lost track of where we were. Photos of that are probably going to sell for thousands. True. Do you think you can get me a copy? That shouldn't be a problem. Hey, that is a problem! A really big problem! You don't want people to know about us? Are you ashamed of me? I don't want to be hounded by paparazzi and strangers every waking moment. Do you have any idea what your fanbase would do to me if they found out? Your fanbase is quite formidable, sir. Fine, we'll keep it a secret, but I'm still getting that photo. But people have already... Don't worry about that, Missy. We have our ways. Right now, though, you should get going. Your plane will leave soon. I suddenly noticed some men who seemingly appeared out of nowhere seducer the gathering crowd away from us. Come on, they won't be able to hold them back for long. He grabbed my hand and led me to the temperature gate. This isn't goodbye. We're going to make this work. You hear me? Softly put his hand to my face. I'll visit you soon. Be prepared. He gave me another kiss before I had to board the plane. He stood there smiling at me until I could no longer see him. Finally, the plane ride took forever. I follow everyone out to the luggage area. I scan the area for Mira as I collect my bag. By the time I spotted her, she was already striding up to me. Hey, Mir- You kissed Eric! How did- It's all over the internet! Oh crap, everyone's going to- Calm down. They were in the office pictures and no one had any idea who you were except me. Seriously though, why didn't you tell me? Can we talk about this at home? My eyes started around nervously at the attention we were starting to gather. Fine, but as soon as we get there, you're going to spill. I want every little detail. 
As soon as we got home, Mira locked the door and bounced on me. Now, what happened? Don't hold anything back. Last I heard, you were regretting teaching some actor guy. You never said he was Eric. In fact, you implied that it wasn't him. That's because I didn't know it was Eric. How do you not know? Uh, he was in costume and we never exchanged names and... He couldn't have looked that different in costume. I don't watch as much TV as you. Most of the kids couldn't tell either. Heck, even Mr. Bandages didn't realize until it was almost over and they apparently go way back. Nira stopped hyperventilating enough for me to explain what had happened. When I finished, she screwed with the light. It's like a movie. You're so lucky I knew it nab some hot guy while you were there, but damn, you really looked a big one. I, uh, someone knocked on the door and I took the opportunity to get a break from Mira's excited questions about Eric. Only to come face to face with him when I opened the door. I told you I would see you soon.